Hey everyone, Eric here, Nomadic Fanatic, coming to you from home base here in Illinois. Today is my project day. I have been waiting patiently for two packages to arrive, and I'm just hoping to get caught back up right now on a few of my arcades here at the house that have gone out. I have two that definitely have monitor issues. One is my Road Blasters game, which you can see I have now taken apart. I take off the front marquee here, I take off the black paneling to access all these hooks. I had to take off the back and unplug some wires to remove this guy here. My 19 inch Wells Gardner 4900 original monitor from 1981. This sucker is 45 pounds heavy and today hopefully I am going to be replacing this with this. <laughs> with this. Wish me luck. Before we start this project, this is not like a tutorial video. I have mentioned in the past when I started collecting arcades that I have done monitor swaps before. And the purists out there that are watching this are just screaming at me about replacing a Wells Gardner tube with an LCD flat screen. But I am not doing this to make this all of my games stay original, okay? I am doing this so that the game works, so that the game can be fixed easily, so the game can be moved better, and so it's just more reliable. That's all I'm going for here. I am sorry if this makes you upset as an arcade enthusiast collector for me ruining it, but the monitor doesn't work, and finding used ones with even less burn-in that work to see how long, it's just not worth it to me, so. I'm going to go this route because I know it works. I'm hoping it works. Let me show you what I got. So I'm going to be showing you some of the process of this in case you happen to have the same game or a similar game and maybe this will save you. Like you have an arcade that turns on, the marquee up top works, you can hear the sound working, you put a quarter in and you hear it wants to work and the speakers work and everything but there's no screen, it just stays black. Well on this guy right here I just unplugged two wires. I unplugged this part right here from that end right there, that is power and ground. And then this six pin wire right here was plugged into spot on the back of the TV right there into that plastic part there. So I unhooked to that, removed all the screws and hardware to pull this out from the front. It was bolted into here. So I removed these nuts and then I brought it out from the front. There it sits and it is junk. A heavy, heavy paperweight piece of garbage. Oh my gosh, that is incredibly heavy. And again, this is a 19 inch replacement screen flat screen that is going to go in its place. I get, that's hilarious that what I'm holding with two fingers is going to replace that monstrosity in this cabinet right here. I picked up the monitor on eBay for 199 bucks. You also need one of these guys here. This is a CGA to VGA adapter. As you can see, it's got a VGA out right there. It's got some other components like I guess that's RCA type stuff, but well, we're going to be using the VGA out, so we're going to be bringing in this cable, going to be doing a little bit of wiring, and we're going to bring that into this, and then I'm going to mount this new video converter somewhere on the inside where the control board is, and I'm going to power it. It's a DC power, so is the monitor, by the way, and more on how we're going to power the cabinet, this, and the monitor in, in just a second, but there's some wiring to get done first. Actually, let me just start with that, okay? Okay, and that monitor comes with a DC to AC style adapter that's be plugged into the wall. Here's where most of the questions are gonna come, and it's like, Eric, the game plugs in with its plug in the back. If you put in a new monitor, or even like if you get a used computer monitor or something, it has a separate plug, so how are you gonna power it? Well, I don't know if this is the right way or wrong way, but I'm gonna use a surge protector and I'm gonna keep the surge protector portion inside the cabinet now. So the main plug for the game is gonna plug into this, the monitor's gonna plug into another outlet on this, and then the end of the surge protector is now gonna come out the back of the game and plug into the wall. So that when I power that outlet, both the screen gets power and the console itself gets power. That's how I'm gonna do it. If you have a better idea, definitely let me know. I'm kinda of new to that. This one does... Um, my Playboy game just turned on by itself. Uh, it's, it's probably, it looks like it's flickering on your screen, but these aren't flickering. These have not been on. This is what's been broke. I don't... Yep, it works again. Why is it... I cannot believe this just started working randomly. Just sitting here, it decided to turn on and start working again. 
Oh my gosh, that is strange. I don't like that feeling necessarily because I don't know why it turned on. I don't know why it stopped working in the first place. That's strange. Um, still, it's got to be better than stuff just randomly stop working. It just starts working again. Okay, cool. We'll get back to that. But anyways, let me put the new monitor up here, get it kind of situated, plugged in, wired up, and see how this all works. I'll put the camera on the tripod and you can see how this goes. All right, got the outlet turned off so I can hook it up. Power there. This thing looks so tiny. <laughs> On the back of the TV, the plug has, it says RGB, red, green, blue on the wire, red is on one end. So the red wire goes into the R, that's, that's the side you start on. And then there's, what, three or four un, unused pins, I guess? But it was like that on the other monitor, too. Yeah, there's four unused pins at the other end, but... Alright, I'm gonna plug the power in here. It's powered. I'm gonna set that there, the adjustment, and I'm gonna put it right there, okay? And, <laughs> it's upside down, but it works! Hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's not bad! So the uh, menu system in here, you can hit menu and then it'll pop up some stuff on your screen. You can do the image adjust, color settings. I'm going to I'm going to wait to mess with the colors because I want the colors here to match the colors on on the inlay and everything. But it's going to be different when you put the glass back on. It's going to change the colors a little bit and make them shinier. So I'm going to I'm going to wait to make that adjustment. It came with some sticky tape so you can put it on, on the back here or something like that. Also, it has the auto adjust feature. So it automatically adjusted and fit this 4.3 into the screen. Isn't that awesome? So now that I know that it works, I, I am breathing a huge sigh of relief that it really was just the monitor in my Road Blasters game. However, there is obviously going to be some customization that needs to be done because that old harness for the TV is not going to hold this TV, right? And this one's going to be sitting something like this. You know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna jerry-rig it up there just so I can see what it's gonna look like. With a spatula and a coffee cup. Oh yeah, high-tech stuff here. Actually, that's pretty close. Let's see. That's actually, that's actually really close. Okay. Okay, that, that'll just sit there for a second now. We've got the stock 1981 cardboard bezel. And this thing, goes in something like that. Yeah, just like that. Which you can see the screen still needs to come up a little bit here. Uh, that or I may just make a new custom bezel or go to a frame shop and have somebody... Well, you know what? No. Because once I raise this up a little bit... I'm sorry, this is 1986. I said 1981. This is a 1986 game. Jeez, I'm, I blew that one. It's my Pac-Man. It's 1981. But the screen's got to come up a little bit to fill this square. If I bring the camera up, that's what I want it to look like in there, okay? So how do you make a custom bracket for this replacement screen? The monitor that I ordered came with two pieces of hardware. These go on the sides like this, and then they have three holes that you could put into wood. However, as you can see, once I screw this into the side, I don't have any wood existing right there to mount it to, which means I have to actually construct something that comes off of this existing wood here, and it has to come further in so that I can adjust this in there. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plug these into the monitor so I can get my measurements, and then I'll bring some tools inside, and I'll start cutting up some wood to custom fit this. And what I'm going to try to do is center it specifically for the stock bezel that I have here, because I don't want to make a new one. So I am going to measure the top to bottom, side to side, to get that monitor perfectly straight in the stock bezel. That, that's my goal here. <laughs> one more of those. Okay, all right. Now I will measure out the space needed to hold the monitor and, and adjust these to wherever I need them so that it fits in there and then I'll drill some pilot holes and drill this in. So let me get some measurements first. Okay. 
Tuck it in. All right, now we got this one right. Now I got to get the up and down level right. And the best way I can think of to do that is to keep putting this back in. That way I can really get an idea for what it's going to look like. So we got this centered here. I'm going to make some marks on the inside corner of the bezel here and here on the 2x4 that I just put in there. And then I'll be able to raise it up and position it better. All right, I think this is good. I got two screws in here just to kind of test fit it. I also moved the camera to the center of the console so, it, so it's going to look normal to you. Let's get this bezel put back in temporarily. That looks great. I'll heat the corners here to kind of move the bezel in a little bit, but at last step here, I'm going to put the last two screws in, then I'm going to clean the screen one more time, because once you put glass back over this, all those smudges are going to be there forever. So I'm going to clean the screen real good here before I put the glass and finish the marquee. All right, screen is clean. Time to put the bezel back in place. One last peek at it. I mean, I can't, I can't complain with that. That's amazing. Let me get the glass, clean that. I cleaned the inside of the glass. I still need to clean the outside of the glass. It goes in the lip like that. Like that. Clean this side. All those fingerprints off. Get the speaker mount cover put back on there which also holds the back glass in place on the bottom. And we'll get the marquee put back in over the light. And the glass for that. Look how clean that looks, guys. I impressed myself tonight. I'm not going to lie to you. That's pretty amazing. Again, I've got all of my arcades on push button outlets, so I'm gonna turn this on and see how this comes out. Ready? Claw machine and this one are the same one. Yeah! I need a quarter, I need a quarter. Time to play. Oh, I love that sound. Such a fun game. It might look weird on your screen but it's totally clear here. If I can't have a pole position, at least I have working road blasters. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Woohoo! So today's turning out to be a really good day, right? Um, however, the pinball machine keeps like turning off and back on and resetting. So I have it turned off right now. I did find someone who fixes pinballs here in town, so I may drop it off before I leave this time and just pick it up next time I come back to base camp. Um, I think it's something minor though, because like I said, I cleaned some connections before and it still lights up and like, like you saw, it does work. It just then it turns off again, but we'll see. However, a couple other things, the uh, hard drive problem on my bowling game, I used an, an air can and sprayed all the contacts the bowling game is now working. However, the next project is my 18-wheeler Sega driving game. And as you can see, I have her taken all apart already. She's got a Wells Gardner K7027 inch in there that does not work. Everything else works. Sound, light, game. You put quarters in, it works and everything. So I took off the steering wheel and I took off all that. Took off the back, got the information and... I also have a replacement LCD monitor for her in this box. So I'm not gonna film this process, but I will let you know how it goes. I'm gonna get started on this one and hopefully we can bring back Sega's 18 wheeler. Good morning, everyone. I stayed up a lot later than I probably should have last night. Actually, it's like 1130 in the morning and I'm gonna start getting back on this project. I have some really good news about 18 wheeler. Last night, I pulled the 27 inch Wells Gardner K7000 monitor out. You can see how much bigger it is compared to the 19 inch of the Road Blasters. Also that 19 inch Road Blasters Wells Gardner, that is the same monitor that is currently in my Miss Pac-Man game, just the horizontal placement instead, and that one is still working awesome. But yeah, this sucker right here is 127 pounds. Is that not just ridiculous? 
127 pounds on that. Just complete junk dead weight. Now don't judge me just yet because I still got some work to do, but the new, I think it's an eight pound LED monitor is, I just have it sitting on a coffee cup in there just to kind of position it. Thing about this monitor is I could not find the 4.3 aspect in a 27 inch. So I ended up actually getting a 32 inch version that is widescreen. Now, what you'll notice is that the monitor itself goes way farther than it used to. It actually goes back into here, but there's a way in, inside the settings where you can crop it in. You can actually change a lot of stuff on these monitors and make it work for any game. So I've scooted the image into the side mirrors right here, and the screen is much, much wider than it used to be. In fact, let me grab the old bezel and show you. All right, I'm going to grab the bezel. Okay, I've got the bezel over it right now. I'm just kind of holding it there. Now I'm going to drop it down and you can see how much wider it is. So, and I've also still got the screen protector on here because I haven't mounted the screen yet. So that's why you see weird things in here. See where my finger is? There's the black line right there at the edge, which is almost perfect. Same thing on the right side. That's where the monitor actually stops. So otherwise the image itself was like way over here and I had to bring it in and kind of scrunch it in to make it fit in this. And I'm not gonna be able to use the old bezel because of the fact that it's gonna cut the screen off right here. And I don't see the point. I mean, I have a widescreen awesome digital display here. I'm gonna build a new custom one probably and just get some black paper and put up here instead and keep the mirror look on the side. But I gotta build a base with wood again on the back and on the sides to mount this so that you can actually move the machine safely later. All right, so monitor is secured in there. As you can see, no coffee cup down there. We'll go to the back, I'll show you how I did that. So I went to Home Depot and I measured this exactly. So I got two and a quarter inch screws with washers into all four corners of the monitor going into the back of this particle board right here. The reason I had to measure it, we'll go to the front. It's because on the other side, we got the mirror right here and I did not want to puncture too far through this particle board and, and break the mirrors on here. So that worked perfectly. It is totally secure. This monitor, this whole game system can now be moved safely with the new monitor. Next step, I'm gonna fill in the gaps here. Right down the street was an Office Depot. Got some of this black particle board. I didn't want to get paper because if there's moisture or something, it can bend and stuff. So I got the more thicker kind of foam black. I'm going to cut this to fit and we'll put it up there. Yes, I've been out here cutting the uh, cardboard to fit. I'll show you what the top looks like. So there's the bezel complete there on the top. I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the... No, but you can see how clean and good that looks. There's one seam there. Now you can see it when it gets dark. But when I stand back, it blends right in. I'm working on the bottom half here. I got half of it done. Well, a little more than half of that. I got to finish that little section. And as you can see, it just fits right on there. I'm going to step back again so you can see the top and bottom bezel. And it's just going to make it so much cleaner. I'm using uh, command strips to adhere it so that if down the road somebody needs to repair this monitor once again and put in another new mo uh, modern monitor, it'll be able to get done. I'm going to cut this last piece right here, and then once we put the glass on, all this black will even look glossy. It's going to look good, though. All right, all put back together, back in its spot. That screen is so much crisper and cleaner and colorful and bright. Looks great in the corner there. So the bowling games were everything in here is working well. Sometimes my pinball machine doesn't work, but then the claw machine and road blasters. It does feel good to fix two of my arcades myself my own way. However, I am not the arcade whisperer. I am not a repairman by any means or diagnoser or anything. I, I am a part swapper though. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I, I will definitely admit that I can definitely swap some parts. I will also bring you back and let you know that my very first arcade game ever that I was familiar with and that was in our family was when I was 12 or 13. Uh, we had John Elway's Team Quarterback, a four-player arcade game I forgot the manufacturer of that, but my brother and I spent a lot of time on that book. It had a little pin that you would pull back to throw, and then you would release after you aimed it, and it would throw the football. It was such an old... If I ever find a John Elway team quarterback game, I'm probably going to add it to my collection here also. But my dad let me take that arcade with me to my very first apartment. I ended up losing the screen on that one as well. Same thing. I had, I had lights up on top. I had sound and everything. I replaced the monitor with a used one I got on eBay. 
I think I spent about $250 on a similar tube monitor like like the broken ones I just pulled out. I'm not doing that anymore. No, I'm, I'm upgrading to LED flat screen panels. But anyway, this is not the first time I've worked on arcades before. I'm terrible at diagnosing stuff. And let's be honest, we got this one, this one, and this one. It's not a matter of if, it's when these three go out. Oh, and my trophy hunting game, when this one goes out, because of this gun, just like Duck Hunt for the NES system, you cannot put an LED upgraded screen in this one. It has to be that tube style. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe if this one goes out, put this screen over there or take that. That one's too big. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. In order for the gun machines to work because of their shooting technology, it has to be that tube screen. But still, it's been a good day, man. I'm really, really happy with how everything turned out. Also, in case I got any arcade people, you might be wondering, well, Eric, why don't you give us some links? We all want links. Where'd you get your screen? Where'd you get your CGA to VGA adapter? You didn't put any links. No, I don't do that on this channel anymore because believe it or not, everything I link sells out immediately. <laughs> And then if I update it in two days, it sells out again. And then it sells out again. And I don't get a penny. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. They won't let me be an affiliate because they said, quote, your referral rate exceeds our, I can't remember what it said. Anyway, I made Amazon too much money. So they cut my Amazon affiliate program. So what you'll see in the video description below are the part numbers. I'll, I'll just give you the part number for what I ordered here and the one I ordered for that one. And I'll give you the name of what I ordered as far as the CGA to VGA adapter. That way you can go find it yourself for a much cheaper price because y'all blame me when they sell out. And it's like, <gasps> I'm just trying to help you. I can't, I can't force them to keep it in stock. So anyways, I'll update you on the Playboy pinball later. But right now, I'm going to get my arcade on. Good night, guys.